had ministry to do before He ascended to the Father. And as you know, Jesus had many numerous post-resurrection appearances where He talked and He touched and He healed and He loved people. Those empty burial clothes remind us of Jesus' desire to minister personally. To have a personal relationship, not only with Peter and the disciples and others, but with you and with me as well. That the risen Lord and Savior isn't far out there somewhere. He's not tucked away in some back corner of heaven, aloof and distant. But Jesus still desires to walk with us and to talk with us and to touch us and to love us and to have a personal relationship with us. He's not in His burial clothes. He's in the radiance of heaven and in the reality of our very beings. Pastor Rick Warren out in California, I want to conclude with this illustration. Pastor, Pastor Rick Warren tells a story that, that he read many years ago in the San Francisco Chronicle, the newspaper there in that city, of a couple named Ken and CJ who had a little coffee shop. And uh, they had sandwiches and other kinds of things as well. And that coffee shop that they ran was not too far from a city park. And Ken and his wife CJ were deeply committed Christians. And there was a man by the name of Jerry that homeless lived in that park. And every once in a while, Jerry would come over to their coffee shop and and they decided that, that they were going to have a personal ministry to Jerry. And so they would give him some coffee and they would give him a sandwich or fix him some other kind of food almost every day. Jerry wouldn't come every day, but when he did, they would see that he was taken care of. In fact, on one particular day, they, they handed Jerry a gift basket fairly expensive gift basket from their, from their little store. And when Jerry was seen in the park with that gift basket, you know, he almost got arrested by the police. Police asked him where he'd gotten it from, and he told them the little coffee shop, and so they took him over to the coffee shop because they thought he had burglarized. He'd stolen it. And they learned from Ken and CJ that no, they had given that gift basket to Jerry. About a week after that incident, Jerry died. And he had one physical possession that folks were aware of. He had a little, had a little backpack. And a lawyer called Ken and CJ not too long thereafter and told them, that they needed to come by his office, and so they did. And when they went by, the man said, Jerry had left them everything in his will. And they were a little stunned by that. First of all, they couldn't even imagine Jerry had made those kind of arrangements. But in that backpack were three things. Number one was a Bible. And the Bible had been marked, and it had been marked to Matthew chapter 25. And Jerry had underlined the verse, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Second thing in that backpack was an actual bona fide will giving to Ken and CJ everything. And the third thing in that backpack was a little bank book. And they went to the bank thinking, what on earth could Jerry have? He had three million dollars. <laughs> Give it to Ken and CJ. You know what they did with that? They turned around and launched a ministry in San Francisco to homeless people. They call it Jerry's Place. Here was a man whose wealth was 
something that so many knew nothing about. I want to say to you on this Easter Sunday, there are so many people who do not know the wealth of heaven, the wealth of grace, the wealth of forgiven sins, the wealth of eternal life, the wealth of having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ who wants to talk with them, heal them, be with them, love them. And so you and I celebrate this morning the empty cross, the empty tomb, the empty burial clothes of Jesus, recognizing the wealth of God's love and grace that all of that symbolizes and means. Isn't that worth sharing with one who doesn't know that? If we can do that, that brings Easter even more alive. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the emptiness of Easter. We thank you for the empty cross, the empty tomb, the empty grave clothes of Jesus, and for the forgiveness of sins, and the wealth of eternity, the desire of Jesus to have a personal relationship with us, to minister to us, to love us, to grace us, to touch us, to heal us. We thank you for the empty things of Easter today. And yet, Lord, we realize that we live in a world, the wealth of Christ they do not know. The things of God they have not claimed. The wondrous emptiness of Easter they do not know, and they are not celebrating. And so, Lord, may we be like the women of Luke 24 who left that, that empty tomb to say, let me tell you what we've seen. Let me tell you what I know. Let me tell you what I've experienced. And oh, proclaim the good news of the risen, living Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May that be our spirit. May that be our response, our celebration, our willingness of Easter. Oh, we give you praise and glory, and we thank you for the blessing of the empty things of Easter. In Jesus' name, the one who is risen and living forever.
words as a, as a benediction from the hymn writer and the pastor Phillips Brooks. Tomb, you shall not hold him longer. Death is strong, but God is stronger. Stronger than the dark, the light. Stronger than the wrong, the right. Faith and hope triumphant say Christ arose on Easter day. God bless you. Amen. And we'll see you back here next Sunday at 10.30.